This is my observation. I have never seen or met or even heard of so many African people with Arabian and European names. I don't care if they're Christian or Muslim. Like, it is crazy. And then the audacity of everyone that you meet would say, go to Africa so that you can go to your motherland. How is that my motherland? When majority of the people are there are serving a God that was given to them by their oppressors. Shit, I might as well stay in America. What the hell? Same thing around me. So why would I go there? There's enough mental bondage in America. Why would I go somewhere else and be in more mental bondage? And then be surrounded by the pain of seeing the devastation that is caused to a continent caused by the oppressors like i mean it's here but we were brought to this land so like i mean people from different places it's like how do you have and i know it's because of religion like it's because of religion when you meet people um with biblical names or names out of the quran like africans black people even here in america the black Muslims, they swear that they are so woke and that their religion is much more powerful and they are so much more alert than anyone else. But yet, if it was yours, why would you have to put black on it? You would not have to, if it was your religion, you don't have to put African Methodist Episcopal. You don't have to put the black nation of Islam. You don't have to put black on it if it's yours. You put black on it to differentiate yourself from the other people who created or is worshiping the same thing that you are worshiping. So you divide it. I mean, you know, you separate yourself to make it your own. And that's the way it is with almost every organization in America. It's always the black something, the black this, black so and so, black so and so. But nobody else does that. You just have the Chamber of Commerce. And it's like, that's why you're always, no matter how much you try to fight out that bag of being a second class citizen or being not good enough, you will always be in that mentality. Because anytime that you feel that you need to attach black or African to something, there must be something created already of that entity that is for another population of people. It's sad. It is very, very saddening. And the more I look at this situation, and it's sad to say, but I'm going to be real. I look back at what they asses did with enslavement. I said, they thought about that shit good. Like, they thought about that so good. There are so many people out here. Black from all around the world who are trying to figure out how to get a story that is their own. But it's so difficult because you, majority of the time, are trying to scrape through all of the layers of brainwashing and everything that you have been brought up knowing to tear it down. And then many don't want to tear it down. They they just going to keep their religion. Like this is the way we've been doing it. This is the way we always going to do it. And that's what makes it so hard. These children are out here lost. Like my I tell my child about it. But in order to have a friend, he had a Samoan friend who texted him and called him a nigger cuz he was trying to see if his phone worked and he didn't respond. I said, "You didn't say nothing." "Oh no, I asked him why would he text that word?" But it's because he's looking for a friend. And I was just like, well, why else would he text the word? What do you mean? Is it really something that you need to ask? Now, we've been having this conversation because I've been kind of paying attention for the last four years. So he's about 14. So I guess four years trying to dismantle 10 years of bondage mentally is difficult for a child. But I still can't understand why you don't say anything. And then I think about all the other people who never talk about it. And they have nothing in them. And I was just like, wow. 
Um, it's crazy. It really is crazy. And it's sad. You know, to meet people from a land that they claim to be so proud of. So proud of. But yet you won't even carry your own name. How is there 17 million trillion Muhammads? That's dumb as hell. It's hella Adams. Isaiah's. All of these names are based off of religions. What is in a name? So if your religion was man-made, your name has no purpose except for what the person who created that religion had in mind when they developed those characters. So now here you are walking around trying to live up to the image, to the name of your religion in a book that you didn't write. Don't know who wrote it, but it was inspired by God. I know. I, I was so there. And then I said, wait a minute. Most of these people are full of lies, deceit, hella secrets, hella scandal stuff. Behind. Most people in religious entities who are higher up pastors, deacons, who people look to for wisdom and guidance, don't have any. They are programmed by that religion. They were taught and um, shaped out of what whoever their mentor was wanted them to be. And they did not have enough power, backbone, or enough knowledge of self to know that they were being shaped by someone else. So where is the liberation in that? When so many people walk around talking about they free or they know who they are, they're enlightened. Where? Because all I see is a whole bunch of motherfuckers walking around like zombies, doing the same thing, saying the same, regurgitating the same thing. And then if they're not in religion, they just chasing the bag. Secure the bag, secure the bag. But you empty as hell. You don't have no money. You don't have no clothes. You just be like, ooh. Um, then you feel like nothing. You had the money, you had the clothes, then you out buying buying women. It's just crazy. It's a cycle. And it's like, damn. They did that. They did that shit. For real. And I, I, it's like, dang. They thought about that long and hard. And they have done some shit. Got you got you chiseling on one thing while a whole nother thing is over here taking place. You can't even grab it or catch it. Because you're still focusing on this one thing thinking that they'll, if we just get this together right here. Then once you get that together, you go over here and do something else. Like the civil rights movement. We got to get the civil rights movement. We get our equality. We're going to be good. Boom. Uh, not. Like colonization, if we could just get decolonized, we can do this. Uh, not if we could just stop the apartheid, if we could stop the desegregation, we can do that. Uh, though, okay, well, if we could just get jobs created, if we can get our children educated, then we can stop it. Uh, no, now we got to stop the prison, prison industrial system. Once we get that um, broke down, that's gonna be it. They did that shit. And people are waking up every day of their life. Walking around happy as hell with $250 shoes on. Paying a mortgage for 35 motherfucking years. No one was meant to pay a mortgage for 30 fucking years. That means that that house ain't meant for you. Mortgages 15 years maybe. That's it. 15 years. Why would you spend 30 years? That's after your children are grown. 30 years? Paying a note? 
Financially, economically, that house was not meant for you. You were not meant to buy a house, but y'all don't know that. Because your leaders are telling you to get your credit right so you can buy a house. And you're going to be paying that house note until you die without even seeing the deed. That's the way to live? But they saying that's the answer, though. Get your credit right so you can buy a house and pay a mortgage for 30 years. Get your credit right. Go get a car so you can pay a car 10,000 times over what it's worth to build your credit. This is what you're being told. Let me get this iPhone. At least you pay $50 a month. It's cool. It's $1,500. $50 a month. You could pay your iPhone plus the interest rates. So just pay it for two and a half years. How many times could you have bought that phone? Again, I say, your oppressors did that shit, and they still doing it today. And they don't even have to put a hand in it because they got people who look like you who are doing it for them very well, very well. And anybody that they see who step outside their box, who don't fit in their mold, who will never choose to be a part of whatever they have going on. They are offended and they are outraged at it. No, 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 not, 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 not your oppressors. I'm saying the people who look like you, the oppressed. Then they want to know what it is about you that won't allow you to be like them. Many of these people have education. You go out, get an education. You have a degree. Do you know in the 1900s, in the 1800s, when they became uh, politicians and um, had a lot of businesses they were birthing, and I think Madam Walker became her own agent and just made all these millions of dollars, and women bought homes in San Francisco and made millions of dollars off her, um, her home, renting out rooms and stuff. She didn't have a degree. That's the secret. She didn't. What you are getting when you go to college is a baptism into your oppression furthermore. Into their policies, into who they want you to be. And you walk that tightrope. Because that's what you're taught. Very seldomly does black people get that education and go start a business of their own. Or a practice of their own. Or even come up with a separate ideology outside of what they have taught. Very, very seldom. I have yet to see a math book written by a black person. I have yet to see a psychology book that is written and promoted by a black person with a different mental, um, mental disorders or different breakdown because what they have in their books are gold to you and you needed to get an education. Again, I say, they did that shit. So you walk around saying, I got a master's degree, I got a PhD, I got an AA, and you dumber than ever. I have seen so many people with degrees cannot think for them damn selves. You go to work in school and say, oh, this is just a policy, this is the way we do it. Never questioning why you do it that way. Police officers going to work, obeying by laws that were put into law underneath some type of segregation or some type of hatred of blacks. Like, what are you being educated for? And they walk around intellectually seeming like they have it all. Sitting in the rooms, <laughs> dressing the part, think, feeling like they got it. And these young men and these young women are looking for guidance. And this, this is who they turn to. So they attach themselves to a train that's going nowhere but in a big-ass circle. Because I don't know if you see it or not, but we have definitely backtracked. Yes, we have. And so now they're trying to progress forward. They're trying to, they're like, okay, we got to buy houses. We got to open businesses. We got to do this and do that. And it's going to be a big ass circle. You're going to be paying a mortgage for 30 years. 
Like what, what? What? Then what? How do you stop it from repeating itself? Nobody's thinking that far. They just want to do it now. But really, they don't want to do it because the reality of it is, they just want to make money for themselves. They want to make sure that their name stands out. Then you got me over here, clowning the f out of them all the time. Don't stop, and I won't stop. Because it's stupid. It's stupid. And I think that it's sad that people who've been in this, this field or been living for longer than 40 years are not thinking on that level. Like, what the hell is wrong with your brain? Now look at the children, and it's like, damn, what's wrong with their brains? Oh, it's the big old cycle. It's crazy. You know, I would prefer that you make your name up. And people laugh and make jokes about Daquan and Kwashanek and, and Sh um, Shamika's and all of that. But let me tell you something. Those names were made up by a father and a mother name. So you may say it's ghetto, but I think that it gives them a chance to create the definition of their names and what they want the meaning of their lives to be. If you ask me, I don't think you have to have a name out of the Bible or of your slave masters, be it Arabian or European descent. for your name to sound like it makes sense. So, keep laughing and joking at it. But at the end of the day, those names have more power than your weak ass name, because guess what your name is doing? Your regular, everyday, European accepted name, Arabian accepted name is doing, allowing you to get as far as your oppressor wants you to get. And when you have reached your pinnacle where they want you to be, they're going to stop your ass right there in your tracks. And you know I'm right.